Hello and welcome to Unit 1 on What is Localization? Our learning objectives for this unit will be to describe the historical development of the localization industry from the early 1980s to the mid-1990s and to define localization both as a product and as a process as well as part of the wider industry to which it belongs. Further reading on this presentation is listed in the references slide, which can be accessed via the left-hand menu or via the resources tab at the top right of your screen. So what is localization? In general terms, localization is the translation and adaptation of a product and its accompanying documentation in order to target the particular needs of a specific market or locale. Locale, in this context, is a technical term which is used to represent the language, the region and the character encoding used for a particular area. In his article on the evolution of the localization industry, Bert Essilink describes localization as revolving around combining language and technology in order to produce a product that can cross cultural and language barriers. Localization emerged in the early 1980s with the development of desktop computers and related software, which heralded the start of personal and business computing. Prior to that time, computers had been confined to academic institutions and corporate organizations and had mainly been used by those with computer programming experience. But in the early 1980s, US-based tech companies such as Microsoft and Sun Microsystems began to expand their operations into international markets. In order to sell their products internationally, there arose the need to translate and adapt to the software applications, their documentation and their help files in order to suit the needs of international users. As Bert Essaylink goes on to say, not only did desktop computer users now need software that would enable them to do their work more efficiently, but the software also had to reflect business processes in tune with local standards and habits, including local language. To begin with, all software localization was handled in-house by the tech companies themselves. Their software developers would first build the software application and create the relevant help files and product documentation before passing all of that material over to the localization department who would then translate and adapt the product for the international market. This two-part process was often problematic, not least of all because localization as a process was still not yet well defined. There were often difficulties in separating the translatable text from the software code, and this would mean that the software developers would have to adapt the code in certain places in order to extract the translatable text. In some instances, parts of the software application may have needed to be completely redesigned in order to suit the business processes and user expectations in the target locale. Furthermore, in order to represent different language scripts on the computer screen, it was necessary to adapt the character encoding. However, at the time, there was no universal character encoding available, which created difficulties in the process of updating multilingual versions of software and managing the different versions available to consumers. Owing to these difficulties, there arose the need for internationalization to better facilitate the localization process. When internationalization occurs before localization, it aims to anticipate the difficulties already mentioned and to address them before localization begins. This would include making preparations in advance to support the correct display of the different language character sets required separating out all translatable text and adding any features or functionalities which would be required by the target locale. The incorporation of internationalization represented a new development in the localization workflow process, one which was highly significant in terms of efficiency as internationalization offered both time and cost-saving benefits. During the 1980s, many US-based tech companies began to establish international offices in Ireland, 
as the Irish government was offering subsidies and other business incentives to encourage industrial development. The Irish government also invested money in technical education programmes aimed at providing workers for the tech companies, who had been attracted by the subsidies, but who also saw Ireland as being a gateway to European markets. By the beginning of the 1990s, the tech companies had established such large in-house localisation departments that they were becoming increasingly difficult to manage effectively. Translators, engineers and project managers were recruited to fill the localisation roles, but they encountered a very steep learning curve, as many of them were still learning how to use computers and had no experience of software localisation. In order to facilitate localization, tech companies had built their own proprietary software localization tools according to the needs of their own localization departments and of the code requirements of their own software localization projects. However, the development of these tools was slow and incomplete, which often added further to the list of problems encountered during localization projects. By the early 1990s, software companies realised, according to Esselink, that localization was not their core business, and they began to outsource their projects. This need to outsource led to the emergence of the localization industry, as translation service providers began to rebrand themselves as localization agencies in order to respond to the growing need for effective and efficient localization. Overall, the 1990s was a period of rapid expansion, both in terms of the use of technology and the amount of software requiring localization, as well as in the newly emerged localization industry itself. This concludes our short journey through the early history of the localization industry. In Unit 2, we'll continue this journey beyond the 1990s and up to the present day. Please click Next to return to the timeline to learn more about the concepts behind the use of translation memory software and the development of open standards for facilitating data exchange.